Hey guys, I'm Eric, you're watching Notes Nerds, and we're going to be talking about the Atari 7800 Pro System. Released in the U.S. May of 1986 and the European Union in 1987, the Atari 7800 was originally going to be released two years prior as a direct successor to the failed Atari 5200 that was discontinued in 1984. Due to the video game market crash of 1983, the 7800 was delayed. Another contributing factor that delayed the release was the sale of Atari to Jack Trammell. How the 7800 was handled under Trammell has been under heavy discussion amongst fan groups for years. The Atari 7800 was the console to redeem Atari in the eyes of their fans. The 6502C processor, also known as Sally 6502, clocked at 1.19 to 1.79 MHz, was significantly more powerful than those found in any console at the time the system was being developed by General Computer Corporation. The console had a system memory of 4 kilobytes of RAM, 4 kilobyte BIOS ROM, with 48 kilobyte cartridge ROM space. The Atari 7800 was capable of various displays ranging from 160 by 240, 320 by 240, 160 by 288, or 320 at 288 if PAL, with 25 on-screen colors out of a possible 256. The system's graphics were handled by the Maria custom chip clocked at 7.16 megahertz. The system was backwards compatible right out of the box with no alterations or peripherals as the TIA chip was built into the system motherboard. The Atari 7800 was plagued with issues, however. First off, the sound was the weakest aspect of the system, with the 2600 hardware, or TIA chip, on board for backwards compatibility. The ability to add a better sound chip was not possible due to the restrictions of space and cost on that motherboard. For example, Dig Dug for the Atari VCS or 2600 and the 7800 versions both had identical sound effects and music. GCC worked around this by allowing the cartridges to have the pokey sound chip included. The only games that included the chip was Ball Blazer and Commando. Other games did not include this feature as a means to reduce overall costs on production. The second issue that plagued the Atari 7800 was the strict licensing agreements that Nintendo enforced upon developers. Thanks to loopholes due to arcade distributors and shell companies, Atari was able to secure a handful of arcade titles on the system. Regardless, Atari still had trouble encouraging developers to bring their games to the console due to a limited market reach. The Atari 7800 was also poised to be a remarkable console ahead of its time. The Atari 7800 originally had an I.O. port that would have allowed the system to be connected to laser disc players. This was to allow games like Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, and other popular laser disc games of the era to come home. Unfortunately, this was ultimately scrapped due to the expensive laser disc players not taking a strong foothold in the market. Atari also intended for the console to allow for a keyboard and other PC-like peripherals to be connected to the 7800 through the I.O. port. This would effectively turn the Atari 7800 into a full-fledged personal computer. This was skipped as Atari, under Jack Trammell, was concerned that this would impact Atari's 8-bit computer line as the 7800 with peripherals would be far less expensive than any true Atari computer. The above-mentioned I.O. port was removed from the second and third iterations of the system. The cutout for the port was ultimately removed by the third iteration as well. The Atari 7800 was discontinued on January 1st of 1992, making way to the next generation Atari console, the Atari Jaguar. The first Atari flashback console, released before At Games was given the license when the third iteration was released, was based around the 7800. Unfortunately, fans were very disappointed due to the system being actually a Nintendo system on a chip. Many of the games were converted to run on the NES chip, which led to inaccurate representation and strange gameplay. All right, guys, so that was the Atari 7800 in a nutshell. Uh, I do want to point something out that I forgot to mention in that narration. Atari 20, uh, 2600 peripherals, like this awesome M Networks Tron controller from Champ, uh, does work on the console, uh, the Atari 7800 as well. Uh, just like the uh, keypad for Star Raiders, a um, bunch of other different peripherals, even the uh, Spectra Vision's uh, CompuMate keyboard works on the Atari 7800, essentially turning that into a full key uh, computer. I do not have one at this time. I am on the hunt for one of those things just because I really want one really bad. I think they're really cool. But yeah, you can use all these awesome peripherals for the 2600 on the 7800 
without any modifications because they all use the same DB9 uh, connector port. So there is that. So let's go on ahead and let's talk about awesome games that I think you should have in your collection right now. Let's start this off with Commando for the Atari 7800. Now this is a great classic arcade shooter from Capcom that was released on the Atari 7800 and the 2600, which we've done a previous video over on our uh, classic retro gaming nerds videos. Anyway, this is a classic game. It's got a lot more details going for it, but if you will take note, it does not sound as good as the NES version, unfortunately. However, don't let that deter you. This is a great shooting game on the Atari 7800. You're going to have a lot of fun. It's got all the same features. It's got the guns. It's got the uh, uh, grenades. It's got all the bad guys. And quite honestly, in the vertical scrolling, I just feel that this has a better look to it than the Nintendo version. Don't get me wrong. The Nintendo version is a great title, but this one... There's just something about it. If it had the same audio quality, I think it would have been a much different experience. But I think you're really going to have a lot of fun with this game, guys, and really well worth putting into your collection. Here is another classic racing game, the old Atari version of Pole Position from Namco, but this is Pole Position 2. It's got four different tracks, it's got great graphics, the uh, parallax, quote unquote parallax scrolling is phenomenal, the backgrounds look great. Overall, this is a great game and is very arcade faithful. Uh, you just can race through this game at uh, great speeds. Uh, there is the need to have both uh, your brake and your uh, acceleration, so this doesn't just auto-scroll forward. You actually have to do something with it here, you know? Um, the game, though, I will say it's just... The audio, again, just like all Atari 7800 games, the audio is not the best simply because, again, there is no pokey chip inside the cartridge and it's relying on the classic 2600 sound effects, so there is that. But overall, the graphics in this game are superb. They just, everything looks like cars, looks like a proper track. The scrolling effect looks really clean, really clear, really crisp. And I think you're just going to have a lot of fun. And, and plus, keep in mind, there's going to be more than one car at a time. I mean, there's parts where you're going to see three cars uh, in front of you that you have to get through. And it actually ups the challenge. So, guys, definitely check this game out. It is totally worth it. Uh, the tracks are just really fun. The challenge is there. And um, the controls, well, quite honestly, they're really, really tight. They're really good. You'll be surprised. Another great Namco classic arcade title, Xevious. This is one of those games that you don't expect to play as well as it does and quite honestly look as good as it does. Yes, the top isn't quite as arcade perfect, you know, with the uh, score and number of lives, but overall, it does sound right, it looks good, it plays good, and the scrolling, look at that scrolling, it is just smooth as butter, the animation is clean, everything about this title screams quality, and it was done right. It's a lot of fun, it's not the best shooter out there, I, I admit, I mean, anybody who's played Xevious can, uh, will tell you that this is not the pinnacle of classic arcade shooters but you know what beggars can't be choosers when it comes to the atari 7800 shooter uh, library so definitely get this game it's not expensive it's easy to find it's pretty much everywhere and it's just a really good classic type This is one of my favorites. We played this in a Retro Gaming Nerds episode uh, quite a few years ago in the old uh, studio. Xenophobe is one of my favorites, and quite honestly, still one of my favorite home releases, aside from the arcade perfect versions that were uh, all part of like various uh, compilation discs found on the uh, modern consoles, all the way from the PlayStation all the way up. Anyway, on the old original consoles, I still feel this one plays so much better than the, uh, in the Nintendo version. The, the character sprite's not exactly the greatest, but I just think 
the use of its color palette and uh, the ability to have what is on the screen at one time really works. Again, sound is an issue, but get past that and you really do have a lot of fun with this title. There's a lot to do in this game. There's so much exploring. And it's not overly difficult. You know when you get all the aliens, unlike the NES version, it just randomly kind of stops, even if you're surrounded and you've saved the base. But this one, you actually have to go through and kill all the Xenos to get through the game. Again, definitely worth picking up. It's a classic. It's not, it's not expensive, not at all. Grab this game, play it. You'll enjoy it every moment. Just, yeah, get it. Yes, one of the only two titles that actually has the pokey chip inside of it. Lucasfilm Games, Ball Blazer. This is a great title. It's, a, it's one of those quirky little uh, sports titles. I mean, the, the, the game is just fantastic. And I still think this one's better than the one found on the old NES. It's a lot of fun. It's super smooth scrolling in all directions. It's fast paced. It's got so many options as far as how difficult you want the computer to be. And I mean, you got two one-on-one uh, -on -one human to human players. So, I mean, it's great for two people and it just handles it, and even when playing with two players, even doesn't matter. You're always going to have two screens at, at, at any given time. As you can see, it just scrolls so pr beautifully. It's just a perfect. It's a perfect example of what a perfect game on the Atari 7800 uh, can be. Definitely snatch this one up. It is getting a little pricier, it seems, but so worth having in your collection. Donkey Kong! This one is a great title! Okay, the sound isn't great, but honestly, I think this one looks more arcade accurate than even the Nintendo Entertainment System version is. It's got all the platforms, it is missing one of the levels, yes, and it has the old Atari 2600 uh, sound effects, but... Look at this game, it looks fantastic! It is the best version out there graphically in comparison to all the classic 8-bit consoles. I'm talking ColecoVision, even the 16-bit, yes, the television was 16-bit. It's better than that one, it's better than 2600, and yes, better than the 5200 version, guys. Definitely pick this one up, it's a worthwhile game. It's a classic. And if you're going to pick up Donkey Kong, get Donkey Kong Jr. This one looks fantastic as well. It's got most of the levels. The graphics are just, as you can see, spot on beautiful. It plays really well, or as well as Donkey Kong Jr. does play. I'm not a big fan of the game, to be honest with you. But it is still a worthwhile title to have. It's an excellent platformer style game. You really do need to have it. Uh, the audio, again, like all other issues, is a problem. However, there is some emulation for Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country out there uh, for homebrew that actually adds pokey sound effects. And it's an amazing experience. You really should check that one out. Uh, here's a game that we've discussed before, and that is Ms. Pac-Man. Now, the Atari 5200 version was ex was just straight up weak sauce. It was not that good. It was clunky. It was uh, skippy. The whole nine yards. Even the sound was ter uh, wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. This is actually surprisingly awesome. It doesn't skip. It do it's just really smooth. The controls are very precise. The game is overall just a wonderful experience. You're going to have a lot of fun with classic uh, Ms. Pac-Man. And yes, it does have the ever so wonderful cutscenes. Last but not least is a classic favorite of mine, Galaga. Uh, this one is not exactly, again, arcade perfect with the uh, graphics for the ship or in the overall screen, but it's okay. The, uh, the gameplay is accurate enough. It is a fun game. You can get into it quite easily and have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, there are uh, uh, different levels of difficulty, so, I mean, you're going to get the kind of gameplay you want. Overall, it's worth having. It's a lot of fun. I do believe that there is some homebrew out there for this title that corrects some of the uh, visual uh, discrepancies. But overall, the stock cartridge version is a great game. 
So that pretty much covers it, guys. Uh, in closing, while this game plays out a little bit longer, do remember that the Atari 7800 has a very small library and is really easy to collect for, and a lot of those games aren't all that expensive. So if you've got a favorite game, please comment below and tell me what your favorite title is. Hey guys, if you want to help support Notes and Nerds, please go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash notesnerds where you can give a little to get a lot back. Tears are only starting at just one full dollar. If you also want to help support us by owning some of our personal merch, please go to shop.notesnerds.com where you can purchase anything you like, like t-shirts, stickers, posters, totes, and a whole lot more. Don't forget to go to all of our social medias at YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, where you can subscribe, follow, like, all that good stuff to keep up with what we're doing. Also, go to our website at www.notesnerds.com where you can check out our blog, you can check out our calendar for convention dates coming up, where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing, and all that good stuff. So, thank you, and tune in next time.